On your screens right now, visuals of the Prime Minister, Prime Minister Narendra Modi engaging with his Japanese counterpart, Fumio Kishida. Now, remember their two goals, their two stated goals at least are A, to discuss this strategic pat partnership between both the countries and also to continue the legacy of Shinzo Abe. Remember, the Prime Minister is there for Abe's funeral that's going to be taking place. Remember, Shinzo Abe was a multiple-time prime minister for the country. He was assassinated on July 8th. Now, in the visuals right now, you can see uh, Prime Minister Modi shaking hands with the Japanese Premier, Japanese uh, Premier Fumio Kishida. Now, India and Japan are two countries that have, over the last few years, shown that they are committed to strengthening that bilateral partnership that they share. The key areas for these two countries of focus have been trade, investment, defense, security, climate change, health security, infrastructure, digital and industrial development, energy, critical and emerging technologies, and of course, human resources. So each of these focus areas have been the focus of both these countries' economies. Now, this will be the third in-person meeting. The meeting you're seeing on your screens is the third in-person meeting between Modi and Kishida this year. And you've again and again had both the leaders say that they want to strengthen the two ties, particularly in the context of the post-pandemic regional and global order. As we've already told you, the Prime Minister, the Indian Prime Minister, will be attending the state funeral ceremony. After that, he'll be visiting the Akasaka Palace. He'll also meet Miss Abe, uh, of course, that is the wife of Shinzo Abe. Representatives from more than 100 countries, including at least 20 heads of state, are expected to participate. India had also announced a one-day mourning on July 9th as a mark of respect for Shinzo Abe. Now, my colleague Abhishek Jha is with us right now to bring us more details. Abhishek, I believe apart from focusing on Shinzo Abe's legacy, the two leaders are also going to be discussing expanding strategic ties. In layman's terms, what does that actually mean? So, over the last several years, Prime Minister Modi and uh, Shinzo Abe, they have uh, made a very strong bilateral relationship between India and Japan. And uh, even after Shinzo Abe has is gone, uh, that relationship, the foundation of which was laid between, uh, from the side of the India's uh, Prime Minister Modi and Japanese side Shinzo Abe uh, continues to be a strong trajectory. Uh, when Prime Minister Modi will be meeting his counterpart from Japan, uh, current Prime Minister uh, Fumio Kishida, uh, both sides will be discussing about the economic ties, trade and investment uh, issues, uh, global issues regarding climate change, regional peace and security. Uh, defense cooperation is one area where India and Japan have tried to uh, enhance their cooperation. Uh, there are technology and emerging technologies uh, which <coughs> India is... Uh, trying to uh, get from Japan, and there can be some collaboration on that. So multiple areas of collaboration have been uh, the, the pillars of strength between the, uh, in the bilateral relation of India and Japan. And we can assume that uh, during, the, uh, during the bilateral meeting that is uh, still under, undergo, uh, these areas will be discussed between the two prime ministers. Okay. And uh, Abhishek, if you could also bring us more details. You've just told us about what the two leaders are going to be di uh, discussing. But also tell us about the follow-up after Abe's assassination in July 8th. A, a very sad day, not just for Japan, but for the entire global community. But walk us through the investigations that took place following Abe's death. So it, it looked like that uh, this, this whole uh, incident, unfortunate incident that happened, did not have any organized structure. Uh, or no crime syndicate was behind it. Uh, it was just an individual's act who was uh, not very happy with the kind of uh, the policies uh, Shinzo Abe had brought into Japan. And probably he was a lone uh, person who, uh, who conceived this idea and executed this idea as well when uh, Kishida, uh, when uh, Japanese Foreign Prime Minister Shinzo Abe was caught uh, unaware that somebody from the crowd can be so... Uh, violent and he can uh, be coming to kill him. So this was the kind of never heard of in Japan's street. We know that there, are, there is hardly any gun violence that happens in Japan and uh, even the policemen who, uh, who uh, are on the streets, they, they, they do not carry their firearms most of the time. So uh, this was very unheard of and unexpected and in that condition of uh, uh, Shinzobe was killed. Uh, however, the investigation over the last few weeks, few months have uh, revealed that there was no a uh, major organized structure was behind okay. it and it was just an individual act. Okay, Abhishek, thank you for these details. For our audiences, it's time right now for a short break. In a few minutes, we return on the morning news with all of the country's top stories. We'll see you in just a few minutes from now.